Did you know that tracheostomies are one of the most commonly performed procedures in today's ICUs? According to medical doctor Mihei Yu, in her medical journal, Tracheostomies, patients on the ward. In 2010, over 100,000 tracheotomies were performed in just that year alone. Hi, my name is Samara San, and I have had personal experience with undergoing a tracheostomy, and throughout my life, I've had to experience some of the effects of this common procedure. So most of you may not even know what a tracheostomy is or have even heard of the term. However, it's so commonly done in today's hospitals that you might know someone that has undergone one or might need one in the future. So today I'm going to talk to you about what a tracheostomy is and why it is needed, as well as what to expect after someone undergoes a tracheostomy. Lastly, I'm going to cover what and how a tracheostomy affects someone's daily life if they have to live with a permanent tracheostomy tube. So what is a tracheostomy? A tracheostomy is a procedure done in which a surgeon makes an incision in the windpipe to insert a breathing tube to aid someone in their breathing if they don't have their own strength to breathe on their own. According to medical doctor Charles G. Durbin, of the University of Virginia Department of Anesthesiology. He reported in his medical journal, Trach, Why, When, and How, that was published in 2010, that as many as 10% of patients requiring at least three days of mechanical ventilation, meaning having to be hooked up to a breathing machine, has had to undergo a tracheostomy in the future during their hospital stay. So this is a very, very common procedure done. And some examples of a patient that might need a tracheostomy are someone, are people that have experienced severe allergic reactions that have affected their ability to breathe on their own, um, anyone in a coma or has suffered severe trauma, as well as anybody that has a respiratory disease. So this procedure is very common and it is not something to be afraid of, however. So next I'm going to talk to you about what to expect if someone near you or someone that you know um, has to undergo a tracheostomy. So even though a tracheostomy is very, very important in, you know, just the survival because it helps someone breathe when they cannot breathe on their own, um, it is not a very long procedure and it's not something to be afraid of if someone has to undergo one. In fact, according to Sheikh Khalifa Medical City in the United Arab Emirates, they reported in a, in a study in 2013 that the median time for a tracheostomy is about 15 to 20 minutes. So a tracheostomy is not a very, very long procedure and it is important to always be there with someone after they undergo this procedure because even though it's not long and it does not um, it's not a very risky procedure. You have to be there to make sure that you help someone get comfortable after they undergo this procedure. So some of the effects of having this procedure has to do with the ability to eat and speak. After someone undergoes a tracheostomy, they cannot speak for the first few days because the tracheostomy tube doesn't allow for air to pass through the vocal cords normally and they've had to, they have to be hooked up to an IV and fed that way. And depending on the severity of their condition, they may even have to have an IV and food fed straight to their stomach. So now that you know what to expect right after someone experiences a tracheostomy, just know that it's not a very thing, a very scary procedure and it is very short. However, if someone has experienced severe trauma or any mental disorders that affects their ability to really breathe and handle secretions on their own, they might need a permanent tracheostomy. So a permanent tracheostomy is some, something to definitely get used to because it really does affect someone's everyday life. According to medical doctor Alexander C. White in his medical journal, Respiratory Care, that was published in August 2010, he reports that practice recommends changing a, trache a tracheostomy tube 
at least seven to fourteen days after it's put in. After, however, after that, it has to be changed to every sixty to ninety days. So you can already tell that tracheostomy tubes are very high maintenance, and if someone has a mental disorder, they may even need help replacing it, as well as suctioning it if they cannot handle anything that is passing through their neck, such as secretions. I myself have, have experienced some complications due to the changing of trach tubes, and it's something that is very, very important. Obviously, it handles someone's breathing, so you always have to make sure that you have the proper home care to watch over someone that does have a trach tube, especially if they are younger or don't have the ability to even make sure that their trach tube is safe on their own. So tracheostomies are one of the most common procedures. And even though a lot of people don't talk with, about this procedure, a lot of people in an ICU have undergone this. We talk about ventilators and a lot of um, high risk diseases and disorders that have to put someone on a ventilator so that they can breathe. But no one actually talks about how that ventilator even gets there or why. So the trachea a tracheostomy is really commonplace in helping someone breathe if they can't breathe on their own. So, if I, so I've covered what a tracheostomy is and why it's most commonly used, as well as what to experience, what to expect after someone undergoes a tracheostomy, and lastly, what to expect if someone in your life has to have a permanent tracheostomy. So I hope that you all have learned a little bit about one of the most common procedures done in today's surgical units. And I hope that you're prepared if anybody in your life has to undergo this procedure. And hopefully you don't yourself. But it's very common and it's already it's always better to be prepared. So I want to thank you all and my name is Marsan.